everyone. Thanks for tuning back in once again to the original Queen Amadash Shakur show. I'm your host, Queen Amadash Shakur, and this is your Daily Vitamins. So as you're coming in, please feel free to go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Be sure to click that notification bell and click the word all so that you're notified each time the Queen Goddess goes live. All right. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Queen Amadash Shakur. And you can also follow me on Twitter at DGoddess27. And make sure you follow the Queen Amadash Shakur fan page on Instagram. All right, so let's get into it. Hello, Pride at Bentley, N. Knight, Cherokee Descendant Dale, Nessie X, Lee Hart, Naima. All right, Chris, Stacy. Shout out to everyone tuned into the Queen and everyone in the chat. So let's get into it, people. Let's get into it. So listen to this. I want you all to see this video that I came across of a woman supposedly possessed by a demon. Now, for those of you who don't believe in demonic possession, well, maybe you don't want to listen to this broadcast, but I will tell you this. It talks about it in the Bible. And so if you believe the Bible, then you know about demonic possession, right? And so with that all being said, I'm going to show you this video because this demon said something that I found very interesting. It's not anything that I didn't know, but it's just shocking that a demon actually said it, okay? So now you can see for yourself. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to share my screen so you all can see this. Everyone, please get those likes up. Please like and share. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you in advance. Okay, here we go. Now, I'm going to mute my mic for a second. I'm going to mute my mic for just a second. All right, here we go. <laughs> but she won't take it. <laughs> what happens if she takes it? She's yours. How? It's just. No. It's just. No, but it's. No, but it's. Just... Let me know just the serpents. The serpents? What serpents? Could get lost. Your, your kingdom. Yes. Set. But she won't take it. What happens if she takes it? She's yours. How? It's just. No. It's just. No, but it's just. Let me know just the serpents. The serpents? What serpents? Could get lost. Your kingdom. Yes. Set. So y'all heard that, right? Y'all heard what the demon said, right? It's it's upset because she won't take her medicine. The demon. Upset because she won't take mind-altering drugs. Because that's what many pharmaceuticals are, right? Now, I'm not a doctor and I'm not giving you medical advice, but there's plenty of commercials where you've heard them tell you what the things are to treat, what the medicine is to treat, but they also tell you about side effects. And sometimes when they talk about these things, don't they say could cause suicidal thoughts? Right? Could cause suicidal thoughts. And then you have to ask yourself, why would something that you're taking to make yourself better make you have suicidal thoughts? Ever ask yourself that? Now let's talk about it. Now listen to this. Sorcery. The use of spells, divination, or speaking to spirits is clearly condemned in the Bible. Now, the word sorcery in scripture is always used to reference in reference to an evil or deceptive practice. For example, in Chronicles 33, 6, King Manasseh is condemned for his evil practices, including sorcery. And he, is, he had burned his sons as an offering. Now, today we call that offering a sacrifice. 
Like I told you about the Gail King and Okra thing this morning on that live broadcast about Okra telling everybody they had to follow the policy to come to her house for Christmas dinner. They kept talking about Gail King's new grandson, Lucas. They called him baby Lucas. Why was he so important in the topic? Ask yourselves, right? Because we already know how they get down with these sacrifices. But let me continue. Now it said, and he burned his sons as an offering in the valley of the son of Hinnom and used fortune telling and omens and sorcery and dealt with mediums and with necromancers. He did much evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger. Now the apostle Paul lists sorcery as one of the many sinful acts that mark, that marks the lives of unbelievers. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. There's sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, amenity, strife, and things like these. I warn you as I warned you before, those things who, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Galatians 5, 19, 21, 19 through 21. Now, interestingly, the New Testament Greek word translated sorcery that is pharmakia, all right? Pharmakia. Now, which is the source of our English word pharmacy. In Paul's day, the word primarily meant dealing poison or drug use. That's what the word pharmakia means. Poisoning, dealing in poison or drug use. Now that word is pharmacy. A word that was related to witchcraft and sorcery is now where you go and get your medicines. So it was applied to divination and spell casting because sorcerers often used drugs along with incantations and amulets to conjure occult power. Reminds me of Bill Gates, but let me continue. Sorcerers were common in the culture of ancient Egypt. Now you can look at Exodus 7, 11 and Isaiah 19, 3. We also see sorcery in the kingdom of Babylon, right here where we are, Babylon, especially in association with King Nebuchadnezzar, Jeremiah 27, 9, and Daniel 2 and 2. All right, you can look those up yourselves. That's why I'm telling you. Now, sorcery is an, is an attempt to bypass God's wisdom and power and give glory to Satan instead. You see, I don't put my trust in man. All right. And then the things that man says and does, because men often lead you astray. And when I say men, I'm not talking specifically about just the males. I'm talking about people in general. I don't put my trust in humans before I do the most time. Because we all know that people can lead you astray. They can give you false information appearing real, right? They can mix lies with truth to deceive you just like devils. Because some people actually are devils. Devils just doesn't apply to Satan himself. Devils is a title. Someone that's wicked, that follows Satan's work, who does wicked things, they are devils. And there's devils absolutely out here paying narratives and pushing agendas. Please pay attention. They're working at the soul behest of Satan. Because were they not, they would be telling you the things that the Most High wants you to do. Right? especially as it pertains to health and wealth, and that would include your mental, physical, and spiritual health. That's why we're in spiritual warfare. Pay attention, people. So Malachi also speaks of God's judgment on those involved in sorcery. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers. That's Malachi 3 and 5. Now, apparently sorcery will be will still be practiced in the end times. Spiritual Babylon. That's where we are right now, people pay attention. Spiritual Babylon representing the false religious system of the last days that we're clearly in will deceive all nations, which is what is being done right now. There's a deception of all nations happening right here, right now, before we look in real time. Now, apparently sorcery will be practiced in the end times. Spiritual Babylon, representing the false religious system of the last days, will deceive all nations with sorcery. They will deceive all nations with sorcery. That's Revelation 18.23, before judgment falls. Now, let's read Revelation 18.23, and let's break it on down. In Revelation 18.23, it says, 
and the light of a lamp will shine in you no more. And the voice of the bridegroom and the bride will be heard in you no more. For your merchants were the great ones of the earth and all nations were deceived by your sorcery. Bill Gates. That's who that sounds like they're talking about to me. And the light of the lamp will shine in you no more and the voice of the bridegroom and bride will be heard no more in you for your merchants were the great ones of the earth and all nations were deceived by your sorcery. Let me say this. When they say the light of the lamp will shine in you no more. What lamp are they talking about? I'm so glad you asked. Let me tell you what lamp they're talking about. When they say the lamp, the light of the lamp will shine in you no more. Remember how I taught you that in the Bible, there's an allegory, right? Where they say, if thy eye be single, then thy body is full of light. So they're talking about the third eye. If thy light or if thy eye be single, right? So with that all being said, the light, the light from the lamp they're talking about is the optic thalamus, the pineal gland, your third eye. Remember how I told you about the kundalini energy or the Christ within energy, the God-like energy that rises you, raises you into your higher self? You see, there's supposed to come a great spiritual awakening and many are supposed to see reality some of them will be seeing it for the first time because many have been stuck and trapped in the matrix. So they've been living in a false reality, but they're supposed to awaken from the slumber and see the truth of everything that is before them and how the devils have been deceiving the masses for centuries. The devils, the global elite who run things, the 1% who dictate how the rest of us th thrive and survive, right? Or how we don't. So with that all being said, if the light of that lamp shines in you no more because of sorcery, what is that telling you? That's telling you that your pineal gland, your third eye, your optic thalamus, it's not going to turn on. It's not going to be activated. You won't be walking around here woke, able to see through the smoke and mirrors. You'll be blind to the light. You won't know or see what's going on. And with that all being said, remember when that energy rises, the kundalini energy, right? When that energy rises up the 33 vertebrae of the spine and crosses the vagus nerve and touches the optic thalamus, your body is illuminated on the inside. Illuminated because then you have become enlightened. Your pineal gland, your third eye has been activated. So basically this is saying you will no longer be enlightened because you're going to be dumbed down, all right? And they will deceive nations through sorcery. Somebody needs to read that to Dr. Frauchi. Okay, Capricorn Black says, drugs are dampening the pineal gland. Absolutely. Why do you think we have a whole opioid crisis? Because people are bringing drugs into this country, right? And drugs alter the mind, you see. And when your mind is altered through drugs, whether they're prescription drugs or street drugs, when your mind is altered through drug use, then these demons, malevolent entities, can come and take over like they did with that woman. They can come in and do exactly what happened to that woman. Now, pay attention. She was refusing to take her medicines and the demon was upset because as you heard the demon say, that's how we control her. And the priest said, through drugs or whatever question he asked the demon, and it said, have you not noticed the serpents at the hospitals? Have you not noticed the serpents? And then he said, go look at the hospitals. And then you see on the end, that was the medical sign with the serpents intertwined. So the demon said they control you through medicines. And I did some research years ago on the story about a young woman named Anna, Anna Michelle or Annalise. Annalise, 
was her name, Annalise Michelle, I believe. They made a movie about her called The Exorcism of Emily Rose. And in that movie, it was based on a true story of a girl named Annalise. And I think her last name was Michelle. I'm not sure, but it was Annalise, somebody. She was German. Anyway, she was possessed by these demons, right? And I remember reading that one of the demons spoke and said that she was possessed because, you know, she was taking this medicine for her epilepsy that she suffered from. And that medicine was altering her mind. And that's how the demons were able to come in. So, and when you think about people who back in the day used to take those psychedelic drugs like LSD and PCP, those people had enormous strength. I read a story about a man who was high off PCP. The, the police, when they were, he was attacking them, they shot him at least 56 times, but 13 times in his head. And he still continued to fight. Now, it took all of that to kill him because he was high off PCP. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure he was demonically possessed. Okay? So that's why it's not good to do drugs because these things can absolutely happen. And if you notice, people who engage in drug abuse and alcohol abuse, often they act so out of character and they get so violent and angry and they want to fight. You know, they'll even kill people. That's because they're taken over by these malevolent entities. And that is why when they, you know, you go to certain package stores, as they call them, or liquor stores, some of them are called spirits. Because when you drink in excess of alcohol, you take on spirits, right? Demonic possession is real. So anyway, I just wanted to share, you, share that with you all because that's real crazy, right? That's real crazy. But if you pay attention to what's going on, if you look with your third eye and you see what's really going on here, that whole video with that demon and what that demon said should absolutely make sense to you. And so should the scriptures that I just read. With that all been said, I'm going to conclude this broadcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in again. And please like and share, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. And I hope to see you on the next chat. Peace.